Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the skeletal system. If this is your first time hearing the term skeletal system, then you missed the video. Go back in and look for the vocab. This is the first set of notes. So, so let's jump in and talk about some of the stuff that we already mentioned in the vocab, but in more detail. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the skeletal system. We're gonna separate these notes into three separate videos. So this is the first video of the notes, second video of the series, but first video of the notes. The first video is gonna be all about the structure of the bones, what everything's made out of, and we already touched up a little bit about that in the vocabulary. Second video is gonna be about function of all those bones. And the third video is gonna be about identifying some of those bones. We're not gonna go through all of them in that video because there's about 209 bones in the entire human body and we just do not have time for that. So we're gonna go over some of the major ones. But first, let's go into this first video, all about structure and development of your bone. Bone structure. Now we're gonna start where we left off in the vocabulary. We're gonna revisit last vocab words where we talked about the different parts of the bone. I wanna go into some more detail today. So like we said before, the epiphysis, the end of the bone. So this section here, notice that that arrow isn't touching any single part. It's kind of like, eh, this area, this section, because that's what it is. An epiphysis is not a physical thing. It is a location, this area of the bone. By the way, guys, I'm making this well ahead of time, and I'm not sure how I am structuring you at during the time of this filming i don't know if i gave you a handout or something on google drive google docs whatever so if i gave you a handout that you are labeling this bone with me um i would suggest circling this entire area and also this entire area down here as well right don't point an arrow at any one thing just make a whole circle and the purpose is this shaped to make a joint. Remember, in anatomy and physiology, every shape has a job. That's the basis of the words anatomy and physiology. Anatomy is the shape, physiology is the job. And the anatomy or the shape of the epiphysis dictates the physiology of the epiphysis, the job of it. In this case, this bone, this epiphysis is shaped to fit nicely into a ball and socket joint of your shoulder. And down here, this epiphysis is flattened to be more of a hinge shape for your elbow. On top of your epiphysis is hyaline cartilage, we call articular cartilage. If you remember a vocab word is articulation. It means movement. This is cartilage we have where there's going to be movement of other bones, where one bone is going to be scraping against this bone. So we have articular cartilage as protection. And this particular picture is of a knee. Our previous picture is the humerus, that's your arm bone. And this is of your knee because your knee has a lot more weight to it, so you're going to need a lot more articular cartilage. So there's going to be a difference per joint. This picture here is actually from an injury. Uh, the website I got it from didn't go into too much detail other than that it is damaged articular cartilage and you can see reddish material beneath that. That is actually the bone in the epiphysis. There's gonna be a lot of blood production. So you can actually see a bit of pinkness to it. <clears throat> Zooming into this knee, you can see how the coats the epiphysis nicely so when they are moving the bones are not rubbing past each other the cartilage is and if the cartilage gets damaged it's a bit easier to repair cartilage than it is to repair bones and if the cartilage gets really damaged luckily there is a surgery for this in fact this is what this video i got was all about repairing articular cartilage uh, we don't have time for us to go through the entire thing but i will go through fast forward and the basics of it is they are going to take this damaged part and scrape it away completely so they have a fresh area to work with. And they're going to drill some holes into the bone itself. Right, that is bone. It looks pink. That's because that's where blood production is. And that hole, those holes, 
give this material something to sink into and hold on to. This is synthetic cartilage that when it dries and smooths out, you'll be as good as new. Moving on, the diaphysis. In between the epiphyses is this long shaft called the diaphysis. The shaft of the bone, remember, is not a physical structure just like the epiphyses. It is a location where we are going to find certain structures. The periosteum, look closely at this picture. I can't zoom in. So you're gonna to have to look closely. If you're on a phone, just kind of like hold it closer to your face and you'll see it looks like this material is peeling away. I went into more detail about this in the vocab. So the short version is, it is a fibrous covering, just like the fibers of your shirt. It is wrapped around the bone so that the fibers of your tendons and ligaments can weave into the fibers of this covering. That is what's holding you together. You are actually woven together. I forgot I had a circle. Here's the circle there. That's the area I'm talking about. Compact bone. Now I'm actually starting to talk about bone material, not just locations. Compact bone is this solid part. If you look closely at this bone, you have this smooth area and you have this spongy looking pocked area. Right? Compact bone is this smooth area that is strong, that is tough, that can support your weight. Right? That is what is going to allow you to stand up straight. And then zooming in on that you have all of this spongy bone. And it's called spongy bone because that's exactly what it looks like. Again, scientists are not clever when they name things. Right? This sponginess is gonna provide you a bunch of empty spaces. But remember, nothing is actually empty in your body. These empty spaces are filled with bone marrow, red marrow in this case, red because that is what's going to make your blood. We said in the vocabulary that your blood cells do not have nuclei, which means they cannot go through mitosis, which means your red cells cannot make new red cells like other cells can. So we're gonna need red marrow in your bones to produce more blood for us. That's where all of your blood is made, in your bones, in your spongy bones specifically. This is a picture of a femur. This is your thigh bone. This rounded portion up here is what goes into your hips, and then down here is the part that joins your knee. So let's zoom in on this a little bit more, and you can see all the structures we just talked about. You can see the compact bone for strength and support. And then here you got all of the spongy bone where you have your red marrow. And then here is a hollow space. Guys, your bones are hollow. You have these spaces, but remember guys, nothing's actually empty in your body. We fill every space as much as we can. So this empty space called the medullary cavity is going to be filled with more marrow, a different kind of marrow than we have up here, where this red marrow is for blood production. This is going to be yellow marrow for fat storage. So since I just talked about them, let's define them. Medullary cavity, the hollow space inside the diaphysis. Inside that hollow space is going to be your marrow. Now here I did not specify the different kinds, but I did in your vocab. In the diaphysis, you have yellow marrow used for fat storage, and in that fat, you're going to store a whole bunch of calcium because your bones are made out of calcium. When you grow more bone, you don't have to look too far to find more calcium deposits. And then up here in the spongy bone, see how it just turned red? We have red marrow for blood production. And then here we see blood vessels going into the bone and reaching up in here as the red cells get made, they enter the blood vessels and then they go out into your circulatory system. Now here's a cool thing I found online and backspace real quick. In this femur, you see the part that goes in the pelvis is shaped like a ball. I found a picture where someone used acid to dissolve away the bone, but left behind the marrow. And what you have is this cool red marrow shape and it has all these holes and spaces where the spongy bone was. And if you look closely, you can actually see some of the yellow marrow where the yellow marrow connected to the epiphysis. Right, moving on, if you remember in the vocabulary video, I told you we have a new Latin word, os, O-S. I believe it might actually be pronounced os 
in the old Latin, but we are pronouncing it us in English. Anytime you have us, we mean bones. So here we have osteocyte. And site will always refer to cells. So this is going to be bone cells. Exact translation from Latin to English. If you look at this picture here, this is not one bone cell. Very misleading, I'm sorry about that. But no, this is bone tissue. If you look closely, we see these black dots. Those are the bone cells. Each black dot is its own individual bone cell. And if you remember all the way back in bio one, oh, I'm going really far, aren't I? We had protein synthesis. Remember that where we got all of these amino acids together in the correct order and we developed a protein. Also in bio one, we talked about something called exocytosis, where we have a bunch of stuff, in this case, the proteins we just made inside the cell. So in the cell, is going to kick it out of the cell and send it to wherever it needs to go in the body. That is what's happening right now. All of these proteins that just got kicked out of the cell are going out here into a space we call the lacuna, the space in between the bone cells. All those bone proteins come out here, solidify, and become the new bone material. That is what we call a vocab word, ossification the creation of bone material. And then because the bone cells, the osteocytes, are in this circular pattern, then the bone material forms in a circular pattern, the lacuna. And three-dimensionally, you see over here, down here in this GIF, if we were to pull one of these circles out, it's actually a cylinder of bone material. So your bones, are actually made up of a bunch of these different cylinders called osteons. It's a whole bunch of osteons fused together for extra strength. So why do we do that? Simple. Let's say this is an osteon, one chunk of bone material, right? Well, we know physics, if you apply enough pressure to one thing, it breaks very easy. You don't want your bone to be made up of only one thing. No. You want your bones to be made out of a bunch of things. Each one of these pencils represents a different osteon, all fused together. And when I apply pressure, that pressure spreads across all of them. Now, if I had a stick, okay, this one's actually pretty big, but more realistic. If I had a stick, one solid piece of wood this thick, I could break that. I'm strong enough. I can break it over the table or something. I, I can break this. But, but that's if it's one piece. With a whole bunch of osteons together, we're going to spread that energy out into a whole bunch of different individual things, and then it becomes much harder break. Like, makes it very difficult to break your bones. So that's why it's going to be a very good thing that all of your bones are just like that stack of pencils. And I forgot I had a larger picture, so a larger gift. So here it is for those of you on phone. Whole bunch of osteons. If I take one of these circles and pull it out, you see it's a cylinder. So here's a still picture of what you just saw, a whole bunch of osteons. In here is the medullary cavity where you have your yellow marrow and all these different cylinders, osteons, are fused together into one bone structure. Now take a look. Inside each osteon, you have blood vessels. And then those blood vessels are snake into the medullary cavity and then go up into the epiphysis, get red marrow, get more blood, and then outward. So that means that you actually have blood coursing through your bones. Your bones can bleed. They will bleed if you break them. So let's take a look at the microscopic structure here. This is, again, the bottom of the femur. So your knee would be down here. And then inside the medullary cavity, you see all the blood vessels and the nerves. But take a look up here. You see this little black wedge? And we're going to zoom in on that black wedge. Right there. That's what we see. So we see here, 
large blood vessels at the small part of the wedge. And that's where we're at, large blood vessels at the small part of the wedge. This is the inside of the medullary cavity where we find the larger blood vessels. And they're going to branch into smaller blood vessels into each of the osteons. Okay, so those are all the different structures that make up individual bones, but let's talk about the different kinds of bones now. If you remember the vocabulary, there were two kinds of bones, intramembranous, intramembranous bones and endochondral bones. Intramembranous bones are gonna be your broad flat bones, like the ones in your skull. Taking a look at this picture, you see it looks like a bunch of cracks. These are not cracks, these are fusion points. They're called sutures, where during development, as a fetus, these were individual bones, but during development, they fuse together to become one big solid bone. We still count them as individual bones, but they are solidly fused together at these suture points. Have you ever heard the word suture before? We also use it to mean stitches. When you cut yourself and you had to get stitches, those are called sutures as well. It's where things come together to fuse back together. While developing, they start off as membrane-like layers of connective tissue. What you're seeing in this picture, guys, is an actual fetus. Uh, this is very, very early stage, uh, so small that we're actually looking at this guy in a microscope. And looking at the skull, you can see individual uh, pieces of cartilage, membrane-like layers of connective tissue. And as this fetus grows, it's gonna undergo ossification. The cartilage is gonna get replaced with bone material during protein synthesis and exocytosis, like we just talked about, and it will become solid bone, and these pieces will eventually fuse together after it's born. Uh, these, I do not believe, are real pictures, just extremely good models. This was a real picture, uh, but I like the details of this one. The cartilage, because these aren't bones yet, the hyaline cartilage has been colored red. So you can see where the ribs are. You can see the humerus bone and the radius and ulna bones in the forearm and that, that they are not connected at the elbow yet. Right? They are still growing and developing. Same thing down here. You can also see that there are no uh, bones in the skull, but you can see a lot of fogginess around the top where membranes are forming. And as it's gonna grow, those membranes start taking up space and meeting up with the other ones, but they stay separate. Now, why do they do that? Why do they not form as one solid piece? Well, that's because this baby is gonna eventually have to get through the birth canal, and that's not a lot of space. So these individual plates are actually gonna shift and kind of overlap each other to make room so that the baby can get out of the birth canal. And then, so the baby actually comes out kind of cone-shaped. And then after a few days to a few weeks, the bones uh, start going back into the normal position. The baby's head rounds back out. And then after a few months, those, uh, those now bones start fusing together into one solid bone. Eventually the cartilage of those layers get replaced with bone material and become bone plates and eventually will fuse together. This is just more pictures of the newborn skull. This is not a fetus. This is now freshly born. Uh, the cartilage is actual bone material now, but you can still see cartilage in between. And you can see the soft spot. A lot of people think the soft spot is closer to the back. It's not. I mean, there is softness all along the way, but the part that they call the soft spot is actually closer to the front where this frontal bone and this frontal bone meet up with the parietal bones, of have a large gap in between. And that's the part you gotta be careful about. You have to be careful about all of it, but you have to be extra careful here because it's larger. And that will eventually fuse together as these bones continue to undergo ossification and this cartilage gets replaced with bone material. All of this will fuse into one solid bone piece. And by the time that you are about two to three months old, the spot back here, this area, will have fused together. But this large spot won't actually become fully closed like it is up here until about 18 months. 
So that's a good amount of time to have to be careful. Moving on to endochondral bones now. These are going to be the longer, uh, more weight supporting bones like the ones in your limbs. This make up most of the bones of the body, the long and skinny ones like your upper and lower limbs. Um, while developing just like before they start off as cartilage and eventually that cartilage becomes bone looking here in this picture looking over here this is the humerus bone underdeveloped and it's just a whole bunch of cartilage hyaline cartilage the hard glassy stuff and then over time the osteocytes the bone cells start going through ossification meaning they go through protein synthesis to make bone material and then kick it out into the cartilage so to replace the cartilage material. And then the bone material and blood cells expand outward until eventually the entire piece is bone. And it's going to look like this. And you see the bone material is replacing the cartilage as the bone grows. And that's going to continue on the rest of your life. As your bones grow, you are just, they're not, the bone itself isn't getting any bigger. You are actually just adding more bone material and making the osteons larger. Going back to this picture, before I looked at it, uh, focusing on the intermembranous bones, but now take a look a close look at these endochondral bones. Again, just like before, it starts off as really small cartilage, and then the cartilage starts growing to meet up with the other endochondral bones at the joints. And then eventually, sometime after the baby is born, after a few months, uh, these joints are still going to continue to form and connect, which is why babies can't walk. It takes time. Right, and that is it for the video for today. All of that was just structure and development. When we come back, we're gonna start talking about function. What do those bones do? But until then, go back to Google Classroom, see if I left you any work to do, and I will see you in the next video.